Chapter 1. A Legacy of Service Adam Walker grew up in Fort Worth, Texas, in a family that was as much defined by military tradition as it was by the values of discipline, loyalty, and honor. His father, a retired army officer, had imbued these principles into Adam from the moment he could walk. The Walkers were a military family through and through, with Adam's older brother having served multiple tours in Afghanistan. From a young age, Adam was taught that service wasn't just a career, it was a calling, a duty that transcended personal wants or desires. By the time Adam turned 18, there was no question what his next step would be. He enlisted in the United States Army, following in the footsteps of his family. His physical prowess and unshakable resolve saw him rise through the ranks quickly. By 26, he had achieved the rank of sergeant, having served multiple tours overseas, where he earned a reputation as someone who could keep his cool in the most intense combat situations. To his comrades Adam was fiercely loyal, calm, collected, and dedicated to the mission. He was the kind of soldier people wanted by their side when things got tough, but what none of them knew was that beneath the surface, Adam's world was falling apart. Chapter 2, Sophia Collins Sophia Collins, 24, had met Adam three years earlier when she was visiting a mutual friend in Dallas. Originally from Denver, Colorado, Sophia worked as a freelance graphic designer. What had initially been a brief meeting quickly turned into a whirlwind romance. Within months, they were inseparable, and by the time Adam was deployed for a year-long tour in 2022, they had already moved in together. Sophia was fun-loving, easygoing, and vibrant, but she struggled with Adam's long absences. The distance weighed heavily on her. She had a small circle of friends and neighbors to keep her company while Adam was away, but there was always an emptiness, a loneliness she couldn't shake. It was during this period of isolation that she met Jason Thompson. Chapter 3. The Neighbor Jason Thompson was everything Adam wasn't, at least in the context of Sophia's increasingly lonely life. He was a 28-year-old construction worker, known around the neighborhood as a helpful, outgoing guy. His muscular build and easy charm made him popular, especially with the women who lived nearby. Jason had lived next door to Adam and Sophia for two years. But it wasn't until Adam's deployment that he and Sophia began spending more time together. At first, their relationship was innocent. Casual chats over coffee, shared meals, a sense of companionship. But the more time they spent together, the deeper their bond grew. Before long what started as a friendship had turned into something much more. They tried to keep it discreet, but rumors started swirling around the neighborhood. By the time Adam returned from deployment in July 2023, Sophia and Jason's affair had been going on for several months. Chapter 4. Betrayal Adam's homecoming was supposed to be a joyful reunion, but even before he stepped foot back in Fort Worth, whispers had reached him. Friends from his hometown mentioned seeing Sophia and Jason together, closer than what seemed appropriate for neighbors. At first Adam tried to push the rumors aside, he told himself it was just small-town gossip, people jealous of his relationship with Sophia. But two days after returning, Adam found the truth in the form of a series of incriminating messages on Sophia's phone. The texts were explicit, leaving no doubt about the nature of her relationship with Jason. Each message painted a vivid picture of secret meetings and stolen moments. With each line he read, a burning rage rose in Adam, shattering his carefully built world. Loyalty was everything to him, his bond to his country, his brothers-in-arms, and to Sophia, and now, the person he loved most had betrayed him in the worst way possible. Chapter 5. The Confrontation The evening of July 18, 2023 was a hot Texas night. Adam left the apartment without a word, not even looking back at Sophia. He walked down the street, dressed in plain clothes, his mind spiraling with thoughts of betrayal. He had no clear plan but the need to confront Jason had taken hold of him. Adam's steps led him to Jason's apartment just a block away. When he arrived, the door was slightly ajar. Almost as if Jason had been expecting company, Adam's military training kicked in. He moved silently, methodically like he had on countless missions overseas. Only this wasn't an enemy combatant, this was personal. Inside the dimly lit apartment, Jason sat on the couch oblivious to the storm about to hit him. He was watching television, completely unaware of the darkness about to unfold. What happened next was pieced together from forensic evidence. The bloodstains, the overturned furniture, the sheer chaos left behind. Adam attacked with a ferocity that no one who knew him could have imagined. Years of discipline, control, and training dissolved in a storm of rage. 
his fists connected with Jason's body, blow after blow, until the man was crumpled on the floor, bones shattered, skull fractured, blood spattered the walls like a macabre painting. There was no chance for Jason to defend himself. The attack was swift, merciless, and deeply personal. Chapter 6. Aftermath. When Adam finished, he stood over Jason's barely breathing body for a moment. The apartment was eerily silent now, save for the quiet hum of the television. He didn't try to hide what he had done. Instead, Adam simply walked out, leaving the door wide open behind him. Sophia discovered the scene the next morning. She had gone to check on Jason, unaware of the horrors waiting inside. The moment she opened the door, she screamed. Jason lay on the floor, lifeless, in a pool of blood. Furniture was scattered across the room, and blood spattered every surface. There was no doubt that this had been a violent, deliberate attack. She dialed 911 in a panic, her hands trembling as she tried to explain what she was seeing. The police arrived within minutes, cordoning off the area and securing the crime scene. Jason's body was taken for autopsy, and the first clues began to surface. Chapter 7. The Investigation Detective Sarah Moore, a seasoned investigator with years of experience handling violent crimes, was assigned to the case. The brutality of the attack stood out immediately. This wasn't a random act of violence, it was personal. The lack of defensive wounds on Jason's body indicated he had been caught off guard, unable to put up any resistance against his attacker. Sophia was the first person questioned. She admitted to the affair with Jason but was evasive when it came to Adam. She acknowledged that he had found out about the affair the night before, but she had no idea where he had gone afterward. She claimed not to know whether he had anything to do with Jason's death, but her unease made her a person of interest. The timeline of events painted a damning picture. Adam had been back for only two days before the murder. Neighbors reported hearing loud noises from Jason's apartment around 10 p.m., but no one had seen Adam enter or leave the building. Chapter 8. Closing in. As the investigation progressed, more evidence came to light. Forensics teams found Adam's fingerprints on Jason's door and traces of blood on a jacket Adam had worn the night of the murder. Surveillance footage from a nearby convenience store showed Adam walking through the neighborhood just before the attack. These details were enough to place Adam at the scene, and his sudden disappearance only deepened the detective's suspicions. After several days of searching, Adam was found hiding in a remote cabin owned by a family friend. He was arrested without resistance, though his silence during questioning only confirmed the detective's worst fears. Chapter 9. Judgment The autopsy confirmed what the investigators already knew. Jason had died from severe head trauma. His body was covered in bruises and broken bones, the result of a prolonged, rage-fueled attack. Adam, once the dedicated soldier who had devoted his life to serving his country, had been consumed by jealousy and betrayal. When it came time for trial, Adam was convicted of second-degree murder. The courtroom was silent as the sentence was read. There was no dispute about what had happened. The evidence was clear, the motive undeniable. Adam had killed Jason in a blind rage, unable to cope with the emotional devastation of Sophia's betrayal. Epilogue. The Weight of Betrayal. Adam's story was one of loyalty turned into violence. His dedication, once his greatest strength, had become his downfall. For Detective Moore the case was an all-too-familiar reminder of how fragile the human mind can be when faced with overwhelming betrayal. In the end, there were no winners. Jason was dead, Sophia was left with the guilt of her affair, and Adam's future, once filled with promise, was destroyed. All because one moment of rage born from loyalty broken beyond repair had turned a hero into a killer.